So we know that a facing is going to sit on the inside of the garment and it's going to come out a little way and it's just going to neaten round these edges round here. So what we need to do first of all is we're going to trace this, this um, I can wonder whether that's on top actually. No, you can't see on top, we're going to do it underneath. Okay, so what we're going to do is make sure that the neck edge is in the middle of the piece of paper somehow, and this is an oversized piece of paper, it's definitely not going to need that much, but it's going to just demonstrate the, the process hopefully. And what I'm going to do then is I'm going to do a little n mark where the fabric over overlaps. Let's, let, yeah, and I've opened up this bit here. So we've got that little bit there, which is where the fabric overlaps. And then I'm going to trace round this neck edge here. So just exactly as it is, right on the edge. And then what I'm going to do then is mark my centre front as well. So where that pleat is, the, the pleat stitching line is. So I've just drawn round this oval. If I just hold that still and lift it up for you, can you see how I've drawn this oval round here, which is the neck opening edge, and I've got the, the centre front, and I've got this centre back marked as well. So what we're going to do then is, we, I'm just going to mark on these shoulder bits. We might not need that, but we'll just mark those shoulder bits on because that's useful to know. Okay, I'm going to take that off now. What I want to do now is I'm going to do um, a facing that is, let's say one inch, because we're going to lose quarter of an inch anyway with our seam allowance, and we're going to lose some with zigzagging it. So I want to do mine at an inch. So I'm just going to mark at an inch. So I move my, let me just move the camera so you can see better. Hold on, see if that's any better. So I've got my um, seam gauge on, and I've got my one inch mark on the on the oval that we've drawn. This is the centre front and this is the centre back. And then I'm just going to, I've just marked that line there. So I've just moved it as long slightly and then I make another little mark with my pencil. Move it along slightly, another line. So I'm always keeping the one inch mark on the edge of my oval as we go round. And this works with adult clothing as well if we have to ever do a facing. This is going to need to fan out a little bit. So always keeping that one inch point on the edge of the facing. This might end up being a little bit wide, but we can always trim it down. It's difficult to add it on once we've done it, but we can always trim it down. So let's do this round here. The other thing that I'm going to do now is do a straight line right through centre front and centre back. So it looks like mine's slightly off, but it's just because of the way I laid it on the paper because I couldn't see the paper through. So I'm just going to draw one long line straight way through centre front and centre back. Because we only need to do half of this. Now, I, I, believe me, I do believe this is easier, even with having to draw the um, facing. I do believe this is easier than the... Um, by a binding method. Okay, so we've got our neck hole here, so we're going to cut, cut this bit out, and this here is the facing, so let me just hash, hash that in for you. We've got our lines all the way around the edge, so we know that at each point this is a one inch away. Centre front we don't need to do anything, but I am going to add a notch there, so half a notch is going at that centre point mark there, which we'll cut out into. And then here, we need to have enough to overlap here. Now, we can always have plenty more and we can neaten it off. But if we have too little, then it's not going to be good. So I am going to extend this just on one side. I'm going to extend it by an inch here, which will give us a bit of a seam allowance and, and allow that to neaten. And I'm just going to extend it by a quarter of an inch here, which is half a centimetre, because I just want to have some seam allowance here. So this here is going to be the back facing, but we'll have a little notch for centre back and then a little notch for centre front. And we're actually going to have our seam allowance here because we're going to join the two pieces here because we can't cut it on a fold because this extends over the edge of the fold. So let me just cut this out and then we'll look at how this matches onto our garment. 
So just if that bit's all a bit confusing the first time you watch it, just watch it back and hopefully it will make sense to you. And then when you see it used, it'll it, that'll cement it for you as to what we're trying to do. So just take out this centre bit here, because I don't need that anymore. Cut it here. And I am using paper scissors to cut out the paper. You'll all be pleased to know. Let's keep this line as smooth as we can do. Okay. So this has given us half of our half of our facing. And if we go back to our garment again now, if we line the center front up with the center front, and lie this down flat, and then follow this round, we can see that this facing is going to sit really nicely onto the edge. So rather than have to manipulate a piece of bias binding to try and get it to go round on these tight corners, this is just going to sit on top and just sit nice and flat. And we've got enough of a an overhang there for that to be neat to for that edge to be neatened because the pattern piece extends over the edge and if we flip this over here because this will then be the center from this way and look at our piece that side line our edges up we've got plenty there as well so i'm happy with that piece of fabric so i'm going to cut two of these out so let's write on this so let's do neck facing cut two. Now if you wanted to you could also cut this um, interface this if you wanted to but I'm not going to um, but just so that you know so neck facing cut two and then we can go to our fabric I've got a bit here that we can use I like using scraps if I can rather than using brand new pieces making sure that our fibres are running north to south or east to west I'm going to cut this out once this way and then I'm going to do a mirrored copy as well. You know we've spoken about mirrored copies already. I know you're going to be shouting at the camera. Yes, Claire, we know about that. I'm just going to watch that video back and just make sure that I'm, I was on camera because I'm not sure I was on quite on camera properly for, for all of that. Hold on one second. Okay, so here's my two pieces of facing that I've cut out. I did check the video and yes, you can see well, so I'm pleased with that. And I've cut out, as you can see, my two mirrored copies because these bits here need to overlap at the back when we're sewing them and these bits here need to match on the front. So I'm just going to take this to the sewing machine and I'm just going to sew a quarter of an inch seam allowance down here. I'm going to press those seam allowances open and I'm going to press that open and that neck edge then should match the oval that we drew on our pattern um, and we should have these bits at the back here that will overlap which will allow us to neaten it at the back so that's what we're going to be doing so as I say I'm just going to take that and just sew that quarter of an inch okay so that gives us our center front so we can just finger press this open now and press the seam allowance open if you've got your eye into hand then you can just quickly just press that open so that it lies nice and flat and then what I'm just going to do now is with those bits overlapping is I am just going to match my sewn line with that centre front line there and that's going to give me the position of my centre back and I'm just going to notch that there and notch that on the other piece as well So we've got our little notches in for our centre back, so that should tell us where we finish. This pattern piece is going to go in with my pattern bag, so I've got that for later. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do now is just neaten around here with a zigzag stitch, just to neaten that off. Same as before, so I'm doing a stitch width of three and a stitch length of one and a half. Find my foot pedal. So again, make sure you put your needle down into the and it's called the fabric. You need to, to spin around. It's quite a quite a curve. And 
again, you can use pink in shears for this, should you wish. Just make sure you lift your other bit, your overlapping bit out of the way. Just take off any whiskers that you need to, just to make sure that's nice and neat. And you're starting and stopping threads as well. Don't need to neaten this inside edge because that's going to be hidden in a minute when we've sewn this on. Okay. So there we've got our facing ready and we're now going to work on our collar. So if we remove the um, pattern pieces from the collar and try and keep them in your, in your pairs if you can do. And then what we're going to do is take one of each pair and turn it over so the wrong side is up. And I'm just going to press my interfacing onto that piece. So that then should give us the two mirrored copies. Now this pattern piece is symmetrical. So we don't need to worry about the front and the back. It's symmetrical all the way around. So I'm just going to press though that seam allowance on. I'm going to use a uh, not seam allowance the um, interfacing on. I'm going to use my silk organza press cloth. I've got one here, so that I can see through when I'm ironing, and then just press it. But but if you're using interfacing, always put something on top. So whether it's a handkerchief, or it's a piece of tissue paper, or it's um, a pillowcase or a tea towel, anything that you've got that's light enough just to hold that down because otherwise the heat of your iron will melt the interfacing onto your bottom of your iron and then it's a bit of a nuisance to try and get it off. So I'm going to centre that as best as I can and just sew that and just um, heat press that on. Okay so this is what it looks like when it's pressed on but hopefully you can see it's got more stiffness to it so it stands up, whereas that piece doesn't want to stand up so much. So it just gives it that little bit of stiffness. And then what we're going to do then is going to match up one that's got seam on, one that's got the interfacing on, with one that hasn't, and we're going to put the right sides of the fabric together. So our pen's gone. Now with this, we need to just be really careful. In fact, I'm going to find my. I've got some silk pins which are nice and thin this fabric's quite thin and we don't want to be marking it with our pins if we can help it so I'm going to just try and sew, um, pin it in the seam allowance rather than in the middle of the gar in the middle of the piece because I don't want it to have the pin marks in so right sides together And these silk pins are just, they've just got a finer wire to them if you like, so they just don't. And these are glass head pins, so you can iron over the top of these. These are really, I just get these off Amazon. I think they are a prim make, I think. No, clover, sorry. The box has clover on it, so they're clover silk pins, which are good ones to use. Okay, and so Sarah says we are going to sew this round with a quarter of an inch seam allowance, but then we're going to trim it back and I'm going to trim it back with my um, pinking shears and I'll show you why when we do that, because this is a really good example of why we do it with that. So just pop these bottom pieces away. So keep everything all tidy, which if we can do is a good idea. And I also need to change my thread to my um, off-white colour, so let me just do that. Okay, so I'm just ready to sew the first one. And we really have to pay attention to this curve here because we can't come in at an angle like that because we'll change the shape. We've really got to be at right angles all the way through for the seam allowance. So I'm coming in at this point here and then we're then going to try and keep this curve as best as we can do. And we're going to go really slowly and possibly only do one or two stitches at a time before we change direction. But that will give us a really nice collar. If you sew too far when you're on a straight line, you're going to get little straight edges and then little points in your collar. So if you've tried doing this dress before, 
and th and that's happened to you that you've got like sort of straight lines and then pointy bits that's what's happened you're not you're not pivoting enough to to keep to this curved edge so let's turn the temp the temperature <laughs> let's turn the speed down on our machine um and take it really steady and as i say i'm starting and i'm coming straight i'm coming in at this angle here i can't see that can you this angle here on the sewing at a quarter of an inch and then i'll start to go round the curve so you really are trying to keep that curve going so we're going to hold on to our threads a couple of stitches forward literally and a couple of stitches back just to hold that together and a needle definitely in your work for this and i'm watching here the curve here with the edge of my presser foot there and i'm i'm holding on to this now and i'm going to be twisting it slightly as i as we sew but now i can see that i want to just start and curve so i'm going to lift my presser foot up move it like a millimetre or part of a millimetre and then just a couple more stitches take this pin out but i can see under here my work is starting to bunch up so i'm going to lift up that presser foot and just spin it round slightly until that's lying flat again and that's going to be your key all the way along the line and sometimes i say only one stitch just to keep this curve trying to keep this quarter of an inch curve all the way around because this is a tiny collar by the time you finish with it as i say we just want to just take our real time with it just keep lifting up their presser foot and it's just giving that nice smooth edge so this bit isn't quite as curved but it's still bunching up a little bit so i can just ease it off And this is how slow I would be sewing this, even if I wasn't on camera, just because we want it to look right. So getting onto a steep curve again. One more. And then we'll take the pin out. Let it all just lie flat and just relax that, that fibre. It's quite a steep end. So I'm going to keep coming round just one stitch. And then round one stitch. One stitch. two stitches then but we're coming back off the curve again and we're wanting to come off this curve right into the edge and then just reverse again just gently mine's bunching up a little bit hopefully we can get that to lie flat again so needle out see it's just bunched up slightly because now those fibers snip off the threads and let me just show you what we've managed to achieve so we've managed to achieve pretty much a quarter of an inch seam allowance all the way around okay so a little bit narrow there a little bit more generous there but we'll see how we get on with it but that's that looks fairly smooth in terms of this line around here and that's what you're looking for you're not looking for it straight 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 and then a, a bit of a jolt so that's what we're aiming for so that's what i would suggest you do once we've done that because i'll do the other one in a second you don't need to watch me do another one you can reverse it can't you is I'm going to take my, my pinking shears and I'm going to go close to but not up to so a few fibres away from with my pinking shears you can't zigzag this this has to be pinking shears because you need to remove that excess fabric and what I'll do is I'll show you on the other one before I've finished it off I'll show you so that's what that's what we're going to end up with with that for our collar okay so let me just go and do the other one and I'll show you why we end up with that um why we want it like that for our collar hold on one second the other thing i've just thought of is if you're sewing around these corners and it's a bit too the, the the foot control is difficult for you just or you haven't got a speed control just remember you can use your hand crank as well so if you wanted to just go forward one stitch at a time and then just move it and then one stitch at a time and just move it you can still keep doing that you don't have to use the foot pedal all the time it'll still work just as well so it's just a little bit faffier but you can still you've got a lot more control just make sure your needles in your work before you lift up your presser foot to change direction but that's another little tip that i just thought of whilst i was doing this okay so this next bit is really interesting because it's one of the skill builds i've got to do yet is talking about doing curves so we've got two pieces of collar they're both stitch liner both on top of each other 
so that's fine we're going to end up with two pieces the same but on one of them no oh, ignore that piece of black thread on one of them i've zigzagged and sorry and used my pinking shears and you can also use your snips if you need to just to take out your little triangles if you've not got pinking shears you don't have to go out and buy them specially but if we then take this now be careful of this because it's a little bit of a bias edge so we're going to just turn this around the other way nice and gently so don't go don't go yanking it around because we've got a bias edge there that we're using so if you turn this one round without that's not been clipped when you when you then look at it can you see how it's not lying straight you can take something like a um the edges of your scissors just gently so together not an open blade and you can just push it out on that seam allowance and just try and get it to lie smoother and, and in a lot of cases you will do but the problem is that when you try and press this can you see under I don't know if you can see underneath there but you can I certainly feel it so try it on yours when you do it you can feel that excess fabric bunched in because the curve here is smaller than the curve on the outside so all that excess fabric hasn't got anywhere to go so it doesn't matter how neatly you press this or what you do with this at this moment in time it won't ever lie flat for you and lie neatly. So let's leave that one like that for the moment and let's go on to our one that we've zig we've um, pinked the seam for or taken out that little bit of excess fabric out. And what that does is when it folds through onto the inside, it allows these edges to sit closer together. So let's fold this one through nice and gently. And this is the same with any kind of collar or any kind of neckline edge. Now already I can see that that is sitting nicer. Just use your finger to, just to push it out. So already we've not got these sharp edges that we had on the other one because that fabric is sitting neater. And if we use our scissors and we just gently just put a little bit of pressure on that seam or just they call it scoring it, don't they? If you just run your scissors around that edge, just gently, you don't want to have any, you don't want to go through anything. You're just trying to push that stitch line right onto the edge especially on this bit where you've turned the corner but if you feel that I don't know if you can see I mean you might be able to see this the zigzags through it a little bit but that bulk of fabric that was stopping in the way of that that collar sitting really nicely has gone so that so that's your top tip so we can now take this one to a board and press it the other thing you could do is if you've got a knitting needle you could just run your knitting needle along that sewn edge and it'll just help it just all sit neatly so just to prove the point that's the that's the difference between the two i think already hopefully you can see that those are sitting differently in the terms of the way that they've been manipulated so if i just turn just turn this one around the other way again just being gentle with it very delicate little collar isn't it Take my pink well let's, let me show you without pinking shears first because if you've not got pinking shears so all we're going to do is just take little zigzags into the fabric up to a couple of sticks a couple of threads away from the actual fabric itself from the fabric itself from the stitch line get my words mixed up and that will then help that all lie nice and neat it is quicker with um pinking shears which is why I tend to use them. But if you haven't got any, you don't need to rush out and buy some because you can just do a, an edge like that. But with these, I can just go around and it just takes out that edge. Now, I know that Sarah said you can trim this collar down, but if you're not careful, when you're turning it and trying to get it nice and neat, the um, fibres can come through this, this seam edge. So that's why I'm... I'm putting forward a different suggestion for you to consider. Obviously, it's your dress. You can do it however you like. Move those bits out of the way. But let me just turn this round, then the other way around. And hopefully you'll see that this one too will now sit much neater now that it's been trimmed. So, you know, it's not just my... I'm not being favouritist on something or the other. Okay. So here we go, let's use the end of these scissors just gently, just to coax that seam out so that we get that stitched edge right on the edge there. Nice and neat, all the way around to the start. 
when we take that to be pressed you can you can see there's just not that bulk within that seam anymore and it's just nice and neat it needs a little bit more work just around here so that's what we need to do hopefully that's been helpful let me just go and press these flat and then we'll be working with these so when you're working with small pieces like this, just bear in mind that it's sometimes impossible to get them to lie immediately flat on. I mean, they should lie flat on top of each other, but I'm just going to just trim this off just to make sure that they're both exactly the same size, just on that inside edge. And I'm literally just taking off a few loose threads, but that will just neaten that up. This one here, we've got a little bit where it's just gone off centre. So again, it's just a cutting out process sometimes. It's just not as neat as we might like but if they're on top of each other that's good and then the next thing that i want to do is just have a quick look at them and match them and see what i want to be at the front and what i want to be at the back so i think we're going to have them that way around okay so if we get our dress and what we want to do is to position them onto the right side of the dress and we have to remember that the stitching line is a quarter of an inch in so these front collar pieces need to if we measure I'm just going to measure and put a little pin in a quarter of an inch down because that's going to be my match point for where these so we've got a pin in there so at that point there I want the collar to be just overlapping slightly but so that it then, when I look at that pin, they're not overlapping. I hope that makes sense. We are going to have to pin through the collar on this. And I think what I will do as well is I'm just going to tack it by hand as well. Just to make sure that that sits right. forward than the other so the symmetry on the front of this is going to be really important so it is fiddly but get it right this is probably why I'm, I didn't want to do this one dress too 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 quickly <laughs> because I knew it was going to be a nuisance so you want that so that these two leaves of the collar if you like are sitting nicely and then what we can do then is we can just move around the collar very gradually and carefully matching the edge of the collar with the edge of the dress. We've got some quite big curves to get around here, folks. So take your time. I'm just So you're going to be bunching up your dress because you've got to get this, this um, neck edge as flat as you can to be able to put your collar on. So that's how that looks. I've got quite a few pins in there and this is bunched up, but if you look there on the collar there, it's not on top of the sleeve, is it? That's not lying flat. This is why we check it. We're just trying to get that to lie flat as best as we can. And the point at which we're stitching within quarter of an inch should be flat. So I've tried to make sure that I've not got any puckers underneath there for when I'm sewing because if we do sew we're going to sew those straight in but we're going to have to just take our time around those shoulder bits because that is a really tight curve so let's then get these other pins let's do some more and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tack this collar on by hand first because otherwise we're going to be struggling to try and attach the facing well facing all the bias it doesn't matter which one at the same time and it could be tricky so I'm just going to take that needle out that pin out and just put it right in on the edge here so that's holding that nicely and 
Oh, sorry, my big fingers are in the way and big fingers and thumbs, but there's nothing, no other way of doing it. So we're just trying to hold that in place. I'm going to take out the pin that I put going across because I've got those lined up now. I shouldn't put pins in my mouth when I'm trying to video and record for you. Okay. So again, seam allowance there. So. And again, you're trying to take something flat and turn it round quite a tight curve. And that's why it's tricky. So don't give yourself a hard time if this is the first time you've tried to do this, because it is tricky to try and do. But if we look on the inside, oh, see, there's a little bit of a pucker there. So I need to just sort that one out. Get that pin out, let it lie flat. Put it back in again. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is just thread my needle. I'm going to use a white thread because even against this collar, it's still going to hold it in place. But then if any fibres get stuck, they're not going to discolour against the white collar. Oops, come on, needle and thread. Got my thread double. I'm just going to just do a knot. So that we've got a knot at the end. Okay. I'm just going to start at this end and I'm just going to make sure that that collar is absolutely on the edge there. And I'm going to stitch it about at a quarter of an inch because that's where we need it to go. Just make sure before you put your stitches in that you, you flat underneath. Otherwise you'll be sewing in the sewing in the errors. As soon as we start to take out the pins it starts to be a bit easier to work with again. So if you do pull it in or pull it in, just just pull it back out again so that it's lying nice and flat. smaller stitches rather than bigger stitches on this because we need to we've got to work we're working with something quite delicate aren't we hopefully you don't all think I'm making a meal out of this I think it's when you it's one of those garments and it's it, I mean I think that Peter Pan collars are tricky anyway to be honest they're not um, they're not the easiest of decorative features to to put on I'd probably choose a um, embroidered little crocheted collar perhaps to put on a dress rather than have to go through all of this but it's all down to taste and this is what Sarah's designed so we're going to going to go with that and it's the picture you've all seen and like and want to make so again we're just making sure that that opening for that collar is right on the seam allowance there so I'm just going to do a stitch there just to hold that down to carry on past taking our pins out as we go oops I think I'll keep banging the cable sorry out it's so just making sure that this is all going to turn out flat once we do it and yeah the top of those shoulders are going to be that tricky point because that's where most of it is and I'm just going to do a double stitch here just to hold this flat okay out of the way. so this is how we've got our collar tacked on at the moment And from the inside, we can see that that's nice and flat. This is flat. Now we've got a bit of a, a crease there, but can you see as soon as I open out the shoulder how that comes out? So it's right. 
then we're over the pleat in the center and again we've just got to pull this fabric out as we're stitching it to like make it lie flat as we're going round so this is going to be and that's another potential point there look where we've got a little crease so we have got to be careful with this as we're going round and let's see how we get on but this is what we're going to do now so we've tacked our collar on now we're going to use our facing so our facing now rather than fiddle with bias binding is we're going to match up that center front point just there and i'm going to put one of my pins in and this should now just mimic the edge of the neckline that we've already had because it's just copied off from the from the dress and if we've not pulled this around too much should fit just nicely on here If you have fiddled with a bias binding before, hopefully you can see that this is a nicer finish. So in between the facing, we've got the main body of the dress and we've got the collar and then we've got the facing. So that there should work. And th this facing just needs to lie as flat as we can get it. And it pretty much is at the quarter of an inch point. I'm just going to just see if I can just flatten that out slightly more to make it slightly better that's better I'm happy with that okay let's go on to the other side and see if we've left enough to be able to finish off this other side and this neckline can can is biased so it can stretch if we're not careful we're just offering it up to the neckline edge and then trying to just pin it so that it's lying flat Yeah, we've still got plenty over there, so that's fine. I'm happy with that. Okay, so we're still offering this up, still pinning this round. Oops, have I run out of pins? Yes, I have. So one more here. I do lose a lot of pins for this, but that's okay. So from the outside, we've got our. I'll just hold this out like this. We've got our um, collar, our facing on, our collar's in the middle and that's the front of our garment. So what I'm going to do now is take this to the sewing machine and I'm going to sew it from the inside because I want to control these um, this area under here. And I'm just going to try and sew it a hair's breadth in towards the neckline from that tacked edge because I know that at that tacked edge everything lies smoothly. And that should give me a good indicator. So wish me luck because we're going in. Just move a couple of bits out of the way just so that we can give you a good view of what we're doing. Make sure my sewing machine's not going to rock. Okay. So let's pop this under here. So I'm going to pop this under so that we then start in the middle. Oh, I've got my pins on the other side, haven't I? Right, I'm going to just pin this from the other side. Hold on. Okay, so I've just moved my pins over to the other side just because that'll be easier for me to control. And I'm going to start from the inside of the neck here. And I can see my tacked stitches. So I'm going to hold on to my threads and get started. I think I'll... No, I'm going to do it with an ordinary 2.2. Um, you might want to tack it first with your machine. It's up to you. I'm just going to go straight in with a 2.2 um, stitch length. So a couple of stitches forward, a couple of stitches back, just to anchor that. That's hit a pin already before we've even started. So I'm just taking this nice and steady around these curves. I've got my speed turned right down as well. Just every now and again, just lift your presser foot and just ease that tension underneath the presser foot. And this sewing bit is the same whether you've attached the facing or whether you've attached um, bias binding. You've still got to sew round the neckline like this. 
It's a really, really tight curve, so this is where you're pivoting and keeping your needle in your work is really important. Back out the way. Another bit here where it was creased up, so it's just move, move the bulk of the fabric back so it goes straight for whilst it's under the needle. Fairly straight over the front here. Just watch out for those pins. I say the trickiest part is getting over the um, getting over the shoulders. So just take your time there. Just come up to the shoulder now. So lift, as I'm pressing the, lifting the press foot, I'm pushing some of the fabric back so that it's neat underneath the, nice and straight underneath the presser foot and underneath the needle. Just lift it up, move it slightly round. and how it will just flatten out for you when you've got it right just make sure you're not going to sew over your bit that you've already done pin out we're on the homeward stretch Loosen our threads off, snip those off, and take it out. Let's have a little look and see how we've done. Oh, I've folded my facing underneath. So, if you do something like this, all we're going to do is take out the stitches on the part that we have messed up. There's no other way of saying it, I messed up. If it happens to all of us so i'm just going to unpick all of this lay it out flat repin it make sure it's all nice and straight and then i'm going to go over that section again and i'm going to double stitch where i started and stopped just to make sure so i'm not going to take off the whole facing just redo the bits where you've over stitched and be happy in the knowledge that i'm not perfect but it's annoying for everybody Okay, so I've just re-stitched over this bit here. Take off my starting and stopping threads. Okay, let's have a little look and see what we've got. So, two little puckers to sort out, but we just do that by just undoing the stitch on the pucker and a couple of stitches either side. So that's one side, that's the other. Okay, I'm going to stitch that flat. Just do them one at a time, otherwise you can undo stitches and not know where you are. So 
a good job I love this fabric, isn't it? And love the effect of the finished dress. Otherwise, it might have gone in the bin by now. <laughs> That's okay there. Another one just here. So just do the same again. A couple of stitches either side. A stitch that's holding the pucker down and then that should release the fabric and allow you to then pull it round to make it lie flat. I need a couple more then I originally thought. I could edit all of this out so that you thought that I got it all perfect first wait, first time round, but that's unrealistic sometimes on some things. So I do try to be authentic. And if you know that I've struggled, um, and if you think that I'm good at my sewing, then it's okay for you to have a little struggle too. or two, being very careful with my fabric. a lot that we can't put right unless you've snipped it off if you've snipped it off then we can't put it right but um, as long as you've not snipped anything off we can usually put things right can't we okay I'm happy with that I'm happy with my collar this is why I don't like Peter Pan collars <laughs> I have to say they are they are my nemesis okay so what I'm going to do now is undo the tacking threads because I think we're close enough. So if you look from the back here, take out these tacking threads. So just distorting where we're sewing. Just making sure you don't take out your actual stitches that you want to keep. Just as we had to trim the um, collar in order for that to sit straight, we need to do the same with this neckline now. We can't just allow it, it won't ever sit straight for us without us doing something to it. Anybody wishing they'd done Daisy's twirling dress instead yet? <laughs> I am. Although, there's a video for that one already. That is a much easier dress to do, I must admit. I wonder how many dislike button um, presses I'll get for this one. So again, that tacking thread's got caught, so just snip it closer and it should just pull out. Just snip it off from this side. Okay, so. front of the collar looks okay which is good there's a tucking thread there I can take, get rid of that one so the idea with this facing is that it should fold through to the other side and when we've trimmed it up it should lie flat so the first thing I'm going to do is use my snips and I'm going to trim this seam allowance back quite a lot to about an eighth of an inch away from the... Get some different scissors. About an eighth of an inch away from the sewn line. Just be careful you're not going to snip anything that you don't want to snip on the other side. Just use the nose of your scissors to get through. It doesn't want to get through very much, does it? Very easily. So 
So we've just taken off a bit. It's not, not tons, but we've taken off enough, hopefully now, that when we fold this through, it's going to sit nicely against the back of the dress. And we can tack this binding down, binding the seam allowance down against the dress. Is it going to work nicely or is it not for me? Wow, this is really tight, isn't it? Credit to anybody who's already done this because boy, is that fiddly. Right, more snipping required. So now we're going to snip in the seam allowance up to, but not through the stitches, especially on the tops of these court sleeves where it needs to. So as I say, we're just doing like when we do the notches, make sure you just go through the through the fabric and seam allowance and not through your actual stitches. If you do, just go back and just re-stitch that section. Okay. Is that going to sit neater for us now? This video may not ever see the light of day, folks. The theory is right. The execution leaves a lot to be desired. Right. Gosh, am I fiddling with this? Okay, we're getting somewhere. I think the first thing I'm going to do is just understitch it, just so that we can try and get some semblance of order. So understitching is when you go through and you stitch, so you press the seam allowance towards the facing for your collar and for your dress. And then we're just going to do run a row of stitches that's hopefully just going to catch inside the seam allowance of the facing. It's going to be tricky, so just take your time um, and we'll do it together so you can see what I'm doing. But um, just make sure you're tacking stitches are out if you're going to be doing this though. Maybe they are interfering slightly. Okay, you can all sack me as a tutorial filmer, I think. So I'm just trying to make sure all those tacking stitches are out first before we try and get this to lie flat and straight. If it had been done in a different colour we would have been able to see those tacking stitches much easily, much easier but being as I decided to do them in the white then it's difficult to tell which is, which is my actual stitching for my neckline and which is the tacking stitches. Usually this, the, the, the regularity of the stitches will help. Right, so under stitching, let's start that. So you pull the facing away from your garment so you pull in in the east to west directions on both of these and then I'm going to just put my needle right across to the left hand side and you're going to see I'm going to pull this flat as I'm stitching just move it across a little bit okay start 
some stock for the stitches. Speed down, needle in the work, okay. So all the way along here, we want to make sure that the collar and the, in, the seam allowance for the actual dress itself is pushed towards the facing. And the stitch should be in gray really, but at least you'll be able to see it. And I'm just pulling out those folds of that fabric as I'm getting close to them. Where's my awl? seam allowance is still up towards the facing and that you're pulling them apart pushing that face in um, and the seam allowance all the way up to the top. Keep moving this facing along. I did reverse stitch at the top and the bottom. So we've sewn a stitch line all the way across the edge there because then when we fold that under, that should then sit and gives a nice edge to the neckline. And that was the whole purpose of the facing was to be able to do that. This isn't gonna be my best work, folks. You're gonna to have to just bear with me. The, the, the theory is right but the execution of it. Let's try pressing it and see if that helps press it into submission because I think that needs pressing now so that it'll sit nicely over the top of the shoulders like that and give us a nice little collar. Okay, let me just go and press it and see how we get on with it and then I can, you can't, well, let's see how we get on. Okay, let me show you what I've managed to do. Am I happy with it? Not 100%, but you'll see why. What I did was I popped the dress down flat this way on the ironing board. And then I coaxed the facing out like that. I mean, if you're working with the bias binding, you've got to do pretty much the same anyway. Just with the facing, you don't then have to turn this under and then stitch it down because you've already neatened that edge and that can just stay as it is. So do I think the, the facing is easier than the bias binding? Yes. Do I think this whole neckline is easy? No, I don't. Um, and I I think it just comes round to the bulk of the, the um, seams at the shoulders, the tight curve around the shoulders where you're sewing. And I think that's what is causing the issues, I think. So we've got the overlap bit at the back of the neckline here, but I popped the um, dress down on the ironing board so I could see that this should, should lie flat. And then I was able to press that. The problem is that then when I turned it over, the collar has got some curves in it. So I used my pressing sausage, ham, pressing ham, sausage ham, and I, did my best to try and iron out some of these little creases and it's not worked very well. Maybe if I go like that, it might work. Hold on a second. This is where if you've got those little irons, you might get a better result. Just watch out for the steam as well though, folks. Otherwise you will scold yourself. That might have worked a little better. 
just try doing that on the other one here. Oops, sorry. Cables. He's telling I get him frustrated with this. Because I want to try and give you a really nice finish. And I think it's just so tiny. I think I'd just probably just change the t-shirt dress with the bow and just put the pleat on and just do the neckline like that and just skip the colour. Okay, that's slightly better. Okay, I'm slightly happy with that. So using the seats, the sausage ham, this one here, as, which as a pressing tool has helped because then I just pressed that out to the outside. I've got a little crease extra in there. We could take that out in a minute or two. So this will sit better when it's on Luna's neck and when it's on your character's neck and it's actually got the curve in it because the curve will then hold on to the neck of the character um, and sit nicely, a bit like Sarah has here. I mean, if you look here with Sarah's, it doesn't look too dissimilar to the way that she's got hers on here. Oops, got some dust. Right, okay, so let's go. Let's carry on anyway because we, st we still have a dress to finish. So here at the edges where we've done the facing, I'm going to fold that in so that it's f the line is continued. I'll take off that thread there. So I'm going to fold that in so the line is continued and then fold it down to itself. And then I'm going to do some little stitches. Just pin it for now some stitches along there just to hold that flat okay so it just neatens off that edge so again here now it's a little bit more than we perhaps need so i'm just going to snip that down a little bit but i wanted to wait until we'd finished to snip everything down so again that's where the seam allowance is oops fold that up doesn't want to go so fold it flat flush with the edge of your dress and the edge of the seam allowance and then just Pull it down towards the edge of the dress and then you can then again just put a pin to hold that still and I will hand sew that bit closed just down there which will give that nice little neat edge at the end okay when we've done that so that will be what the back will look like when that's all finished off so we can just sew that together and sew that together you could do it on the machine if you wanted to but I'll do it by hand to try and make it neater you wouldn't believe my, I try and get a nice finish, would you, with all of this? I'm not happy with that collar. The, the principle is right. I'm happy with the principle, but not with the actual ex execution. The next thing I'm going to do then is I'm going to zigzag down these sides here because we haven't done these back sides yet in order to get those neatened off. So let me just go and zigzag that and sew this bit down and then I'll come back to you. So I just zigzagged all the way along with the edges here so now what we're going to do is we're going to put right sides together for the bottom of the skirt and we're going to match that point to pin him we're now going to match the underarm seam make sure our sleeves are right way around that's it and put a pin in on that corner just there or just before it because it might be a bit thick through the seam allowance and then again just trim off these threads here for me and then again, making sure that the edges of the seam are the same length on the sleeve edge. Okay, so now we're going to start and stop here. We have to reinforce back tack here. So all the way down here to the underarm seam, we're going to pivot on that sewn seam there and then come down here and again, sew all the way down there. So with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Make sure I'm not on my zigzag, which I am from neatening those edges. I'm just going to put my needle in the work first and take that pin out because we've got that rick rack we've got to get over. So a couple of stitches forward, a couple of stitches back. And then by holding onto the threads at the back, I can help this just through the sewing machine. Just take its time. Set wasn't quite as bad as the other sections on the pockets. So go forward until we hit that stitching line. Leave our needle in our work. And we're going to pivot, making sure this matches. That's it. If you need to put more pins in, put more pins in. 
then we're going to go down. This is what's going to turn our dress into a dress. And then do the other side. So again, oops, more threads. Just pull those out where you, when you find them. Trim them off. So bottom of the skirt is one match point. Pin in there. Under the arm is another match point. More threads. Just pin that. And then on the edge of the sleeve as well, we're just going to pin that together as well. Okay, so let's just sew this side down as well. to our threads and that can just put a little bit of pressure on just to pull everything through the sewing machine. We don't want to tug it so hard that we break our needle but we just sometimes that little bit of pressure just helps. So lay your dress out flat. So take your pin out as you get closer and then with your needle in your work you'll be able to then get to that sewing line and then pivot. Make sure that your seam allowances are on top of each other. And then if, the, if you've watched my videos before, you know I don't like these um, seams. So, if, well, hold a second, let's just turn it around the right way around first and have a look at our beautiful dress that's been a nuisance. Oh, I've got a pucker in there. You know what I was just saying about this dress being a nuisance? I rest my case. So I've just got a pucker on that seam. I think it's where it's been zigzagged. So I'm just going to ease that out and go back over that. not about not going wrong it's about working out how to make it right okay happy with that now more threads I think this is going to be the dress of my nightmares I think isn't it sorry folks if this is not up to scratch and you've given up on me a long time ago if you've persevered through then I hope the entertainment value of watching me struggle has been worth it if you're a beginner sewer, there are other dresses out there, like the t-shirt dress and like Daisy's twirling dress, which are much easier to do. So I would suggest that this one isn't for a beginner, unless you're very dedicated and fancy some pain. So just in this seam here, just where the underarm seam is, I've forgotten to snip it. So you need to look for where your stitch line is here goes up and then pivots and in that the center of that triangle there to the you just need to do a little snip and that just releases the fabric so it's underneath this arm here again so where the sleeve hasn't been turned out you've got a a right angle there look and that's why it's not foot pulling through so what you have to do is take your snips and you just cut through from the the put the um, angle here to the towards your stitches um, and just leave a couple of mil to your stitches and then when you turn this through it will then sit nicer for you. So it might work out better if you used a cotton lawn rather than a quilting cotton. 
and your thread to snip off. Um, it might work out better if you use the bias binding. It's just I'm just not a fan of that finish because I know that it doesn't work. It works even less for me than this one did. I've got a red thread to cut in there. Let's so pull that through. I hope Luna likes her dress because she's not getting another one like this. So drop it's really cute. Okay, and then if you've watched my videos before, you know I'm not a fan of the seam allowance in the sleeve sticking up like this. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this to the side and just put a couple of stitches on the edge there just to hold it flat. The machine possibly won't like it very much. Well, that bit's gone okay, actually. Get this threads on. But it just makes it just sit, sit flatter when she's actually wearing it. So again, I just put that to the back. Just flatten the sleeve down and you should be able to get into that seam allowance. Literally just a couple of stitches forward, a couple of stitches back and it'll just hold it down for you. A little frayed edge there, just get rid of those fluffy bits. You can always use a little bit of fray check if you want to on the edges of these just to make them sit right. So surprisingly, the dress has turned out okay. We'll see what it's like when it's actually on Luna and whether the collar stays down or not. The other thing that I would suggest you do is with your facing is just tack it down at the centre front here I've got needle and thread, yes. So just here, just put a couple of stitches through the back of the pleat onto the facing um, and just do a few stitches over the top of each other. I'll just hold that together for you. In the matching thread, it's practically in invisible. And again, on a shoulder, I would fold that back as well make sure it's sitting about right and then just tack that down as well you're literally just doing a few stitches just into the seam allowance and into the neck, neck edge it'll just help it just sit flat for you and again this side so just flatten it down to that back seam allowance And then we'll be on to hem and we'll be on to press studs and then hey presto our dress will be finished. Okay. So it's looking okay. So to do the hem, Sarah suggested using a bias trim. Um, and we can do that, that's no problem at all. So let's just move the machine out of the way. We need to do some cutting first. So that's our dress. It's looking okay-ish. Okay. So let's go on to the hem for our dress. So for the bottom of the skirt, then um, Sarah has suggested using a one inch wide bias binding. Now this is a three quarters of an inch bias binding, but I think that's gonna work okay on the bottom of here. It's not a perfect match, a nice pretty pink one or a blue one would do, but I've got this one already made. Um, and given the trials and tribulations so far, I'm not going to take this video any longer by showing you how to make your own, but I will on another video another day. So bias binding is cut on the bias and it's got a straight um a stretch to it when i say it's cut on the bias whereas we normally cut things out in line with the selvage edge either north to south preferably or east to west if we have to with bias binding we work on the diagonal to the selvage edge so you're going across this way here so this fabric here has been cut from a strip of fabric this way and what that does is if is it does allow the fabric to bend slightly and because on the bottom of this skirt we've got this curve, we're gonna to struggle to just do a straight turned over hem because it's back to the curve being um, longer 
there than it is when we fold it up. So the bias binding helps us get a nice edge without it being too much of a problem. So to wait, so that's that's the bias edge rather than uh, bias bind, it's bias binding rather than straight edge. But it's generally folded up like this. So you have these two edges folded in, and the idea is that you can sew this right sides together on your fabric, on your hem. Just put a couple of pins in just to show you, and then we'll we'll, we'll actually do it. And then when you fold that over and then fold it back on itself, you get a lovely neat edge on the bottom of your hem. But because of this stretch on this bias, we can coax those fibres together slightly so it'll incorporate the, the curve of the hem and lie flat. That's how it's supposed to work. So what we're going to do with this then now is we're going to start and have our join at the back here. Make sure we've got the feather, feather, um, the threads off and there is a way of joining it invisibly but I think for the purposes of this tutorial today we're just going to just fold it on the flat so we're just going to fold in a small amount and then we're then going to match in the edge of the dress we're just going to put a pin in at right angles and we're just going to stretch the bias edge slightly as we sew it or as we pin it because we want it to be tighter on that top edge than it is on the bottom and that will help it sit nicely so I'm just holding it with my fingers as I pin this in place and I will open that side seam up so it's not so bulky I haven't pressed that yet but we can go back and press that Oops, side seams open and then just continue just give it a little pull as you just attaching it round on just on that one edge only so you're just folding out this first edge and just pulling it just a little bit just a little bit as you go round I'm just going to pin this all the way around the hem of the dress So bias binding does have a place and I do like it and I've used this for hems before when I've got a circle skirt hem to um, to hem, <laughs> um, such as like the um, cashmere Upton dresses that I made, they had, um, some of those had a circle, um, a curved hem on them and so that will, this is the best way of finishing this off. But you can make your own bias binding as well so that doesn't restrict you to what you've got to have. I think I bought this one from Higgs and Higgs because I made some aprons with a bias bound edge and this is what's left over from those aprons. So then when we get to the end we're just going to overlap it into where we were and then just put that other pin in and that'll just hold that bit straight for us and then once we've overlapped it and we're comfortable it's going to be the right length we can then just snip that off. Okay. So let's go back to the sewing machine. And what we're going to do is see that little that little furrow there for the um the edge of the bias binding. We're just going to stitch almost one one hair's breadth or one thread away from that. So it might be better if I do this inside out. And I've put right side of the bias binding to right side of the dress as well, just so that you know. And I'm going to start and stop where we finish here. So let's get this lined up. We're on stitch number one. That should be fine with the edge of the dress. Watch out. A couple of stitches forward, a couple of stitches back. Take this first pin out. And then I'm just going to follow this around the edge of the skirt. As I say, I'm just trying to trying to sew to the one, it, and I'm putting needle in your work just to hold it while you just and you just keep rolling the, the dress towards you as you sew. Hopefully, you can see. 
what they're doing. Taking the pins out as we go. Just keep rolling the dress forward to you as you as you're sewing round. Doesn't matter if you go over that crease, but try not to. It'll just help it fold better if it doesn't go over the crease. The stitching. And then what you're trying to do is this to join up without a bump um, going. So if you have to, just stop and manipulate your fabric. Just do that so that you've not got a, a bump underneath where this is all going to join up again. And just reverse at the end. And take my threads off. So hopefully you can see here, I've sewn, just tried to sew just to the other side of that, that crease. Because what we want to do is when that fold, that want that to fold back nicely on the existing crease. And it does, and the seam allowance is just going to go straight into that. So we're sort of pushing it down towards the seam allowance, towards the hem really. And then that's going to just fold over. And then what we can do is take this to the pressing board. And we're just going to press that seat, that hem. And I normally press it just so you can just see a smidge of your fabric on the other side because what we don't want you to do is we don't want you to be able to see the actual bias binding on the edge of your on the other side of your dress on the right side of your dress so we're just using our fingers just to make sure this is all going to sit nicely I'm just coaxing it into place just finger pressing it and that's all going to sit nicely that's good and then where these edges are here I usually just fold those up together so they can fold over together and then put those back that way. I'll take a little bit of this one out just because there's a little bit of extra bulk there that we don't need. I'm just taking a little slither off just towards a, a wedge edge off there. And the best thing to do now is just to press this just quickly so I'll just go and do that okay so just pin that and that's you can hopefully see on this here how this is a wider curved edge than this edge here and then all we need to do now is just go and just sew that in place now Sarah has machine sewn hers I think that I would like to hand sew mine because I think that'll give a much nicer finish so I'm just going to hand sew mine but if you just want to whistle around with the sewing machine then there's no judgment here. You do whatever suits you and what you're wanting to, to do. Um, and I'll just put a couple of stitches just along here as well, just to hold that, that flat. Um, and then we're on to press studs and buttons and then we're, we're done. So we've got our dress now all nicely finished and I've just finished hand stitching the um, hem down on the hem on the edge of the bias binding and that's all gone in very nice and smoothly whoops i'm just knocking my bastards out so the dress itself is looking lovely i think it's looking nice okay the neckline and the collar has given me an amount of grief um but hopefully you can't really tell that much with the rest of the dress um so for now what we're going to do is just persevere on and carry on and we're going to neaten down the back of here by adding our two press studs one at the top and one halfway down that will just hold that um, closed and then we'll get some small buttons and sew those over the top so first off we're going to do the press studs first so with these if you've sewn I don't know if you've sewn these before or not um, but you just need they come in two little parts just press call them press snaps so you've got that part there we go um, th these two parts here and then they, they clip into each other when you 
press them so you just need to put two of these onto I use that usually you put those onto that this flat side here one at the top and one halfway down and then the corresponding part will go opposite on the other side to make that look neat so let me just sew those on first and then we'll come back and we'll do the buttons I have shown people before but I put a little knot at the end of my thread and then I take a, a stitch in place just through the fabric first just one one way and then one the other way just to anchor that thread into the dress first if you've got any little bits of thread showing off the end of your knot then I just take those off but then I then take one of my <laughs> I keep losing oh goodness me what is happening today take one of my press studs the flatter bit and I thread that through the hole so I don't try and sew it straight on I put, put it through so it's anchored onto my thread first then I can follow it down to the end and I hide my knot is hidden underneath the actual thread it's underneath the press stud itself and then I take three stitches three or four stitches just catching some threads of the dress through the hole on each one and then I just move around the next one so I just then travel underneath the dress there come out the next hole and that just helps you just then hold it in place whilst you stitch your stitches without having to chase it all over although I've just built all mine all over there all over my sewing room but never mind just make sure you don't get any loops on your threads as you're stitching because of it being double and then travel underneath again to the next one if you use a little matching thread like I've done here, look, it's quite nice. And although it's a blue top, this grey thread's matching really nicely. So three or four stitches through each hole, and I do that the same on the other part. You'll also see there I've got a loop, but if you just separate out your threads and just pull on one of them, then it should just disappear inside. There. and travel underneath into the next one that's it easy to get tangled up isn't it this thread's probably a little bit long really so I hope you're all having a good day I hope you're having a better day than I am I probably will end up posting this video even though I feel like it's probably not my best but I don't think that I'll be making this dress again certainly not with this neckline I'd much prefer to make the t-shirt dress I think or the tie shoulder dress or Daisy's twirling dress they're all videos that I've got on my website on my website on my channel already my youtube channel so have a look at those especially if you're a beginner or in your hurry then I would suggest one of those other dresses instead of this one um, when I come to finish off, what I do is I go back into the work, or back into the dress between the facing and the and the um, outer dress and underneath, and I just crisscross the press stud two or three times if my thread will come through, because then it just gives a little stitch just at that point, but it gives you a nice long tail as well, so that you can't even if it it shouldn't then come undone is what I'm saying without you having to really reinforce it in one place so once I've done that then I'll snip my thread off we've got one piece on and then I thread put another knot in my thread go right there trim off the ends we don't want the ends I get the other piece of the press stud. I do the same thing again. So I take a couple of stitches in place here. Make sure I know where that press stud is going to match. It's easy on this part here. But when we get down to the other bit, we can... A couple of stitches in place. Then I thread my press stud onto my needle. 
without trying to get it into place first because then that, that just means it can't go anywhere, it can't get lost. And then I again sew this over the top of my knot. And because we've got that facing, it's just nicely um, allows us to grab a bit of that facing for our stitches to sew this on. So I'll finish sewing this on and I'll come back to you to talk about buttons in a second. So I've just finished Luna's polka dot dress. I have just sewn on the press studs and the buttons on the back here. I think you know how to do that, so I've not shown you how to do that. But we're just about to pop this onto her and see how she looks in it. Um, and see if she likes it. I love the fabric choice. So Julianne, well done, you chose a fabulous um, pattern for this. I know it's not got polka dots on it, but that's if you look for the polka dot dress in, in book one, then you'll find this dress. Just fits on and just nicely. So the sleeves are a little bit snug, but they're, they, they do fit. So if you overstuff it, well, well stuff your, I'd stuff mine quite firmly, my Lunas, but if you stuff yours quite well, then you should be fine too. And then we're just, just about trying to get this collar to sit nicely now. That was going to be my concern. Just twist your sleeves a little bit, Luna, make sure they're right. So yeah, I mean, I mean, it is, it is a lovely dress. I'm not saying it's not with that pleat on the front. Um, it really is nice and with the pockets. Um, I do like the t-shirt dress as well, which is this one. But I'm going to say that if you, well, I'll say it in the introduction about being a, I'll just reiterate really that if you're a beginner and if you've, if you've stuck with me this far through the video, absolutely you deserve a medal. Thank you very, very much. Um, because this has not been an easy dress. I don't know what, for whatever reason, whether it's just my machine or whether it's just the, something in the air today i don't know it's just not gone as well as i would normally have liked so apologies for that but thank you for sticking with me as i was going to say um i think you could alter the t-shirt dress to have a pleat down the front if you like this effect you could also use these pockets and put those onto the t-shirt dress as well quite easily um the construction of the sleeves in the t-shirt dress is different this is a raglan sleeve and this is a an inset sleeve so again, I don't know whether it's the difference in construction there that's made it dif different, possibly, I don't know. But for, just for some reason, I've struggled. So if you want um, to see a tutorial for the t-shirt dress, I have got that one available on my channel. And also, if you fancied um, a dress like this one, then I've this is Daisy's twirling dress with the net insert and with the lace trim on the edge of that. And then press studs on the shoulders and a con I've, I've put a contrast trim in, but you could use the same then that's another much easier dress I feel to complete um, in the time given and that will be shown by the how long this tutorial is. So um, let me just um, pop this back up again after looking at Luna in her lovely dress and I'll, um, I'll wrap up. So I just wanted to say in conclusion that Luna is very happy with her little polka dot dress. And I'm so relieved that she is. I have to say the collar is sitting okay. It's not my best work. Um, I don't quite know why I struggled so much with that. I think it's just the layers of fabric round the round the neckline. Um, the collar isn't as nice as I would like at the back here either. I don't think that's even. So just bear that in mind when you're watching the tutorial. I'll put a little disclaimer up as well to say that it perhaps needs to be a little bit tighter, maybe on the back. I don't know, but it's 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 in the right place. Everything's in the right place. Um, it's just that it's just not kind of sitting quite as nicely as it perhaps should do. I think that if I was doing this again, I'd probably make a Peter Pan collar and then just stitch it on the outside or have a little bit of a lace trim or something like that to try and, and, and sort it through. I hope you like it. <laughs> Luna likes it. Um, I hope that I've given you a smile in places um, looking at my frustrations. I do feel quite frustrated with it. Um, I don't feel it's been an easy sew. Um, but if you've got this far, as I said before, in the last bit then then well done to you um so i'm going to wrap it up for now because this video is more than long enough already um and that was the polka dot dress um by sarah peel of cool crafting for luna lapin 
have a great day everybody happy stitching i'm not going to say if you've liked this video because i don't think anybody will do um but um if you don't mind subscribe it's because subscribing and supporting me on my channel then um and have a look at some of my other videos and my tutorials then i hopefully you will think that they are much better than this one has been today but in the interest of being open and transparent we have to ha post our good days as well as our bad days don't we so um from a not so good day enjoy your stitching time everybody and i hope it's all good with you see you soon bye